Hey friends, this is Namrata. Hope you're all doing okay and staying safe uh, during this pandemic. This is a continuation session related to Salesforce Lightning Scheduler. Before watching uh, this video session, I would request you all to please watch session 1 and session 2 related to the Salesforce Lightning Scheduler. We have discussed in detail about how do we configure the Lightning Scheduler and different terminologies related to Lightning Scheduler in those sessions. And in today's session, what we will be discussing is we will be discussing mainly on the uh, Lightning Scheduler settings and how we can go ahead and configure the concurrent uh, scheduling. I got requests from uh, most of you asking me to con asking me to um, you know do a demo on how can we go ahead and configure the concurrent scheduling. So here we are today to discuss how we can go ahead and configure the concurrent um, scheduling. Now let us log in into our Salesforce um, Lightning Scheduler uh, that is Sales Service Lightning um, Demo Org and see how we can do that. So this is my FSL Field Service Lightning Demo Org which we have created in my session 1 or session 2 I guess. So uh, as we discussed we will be mainly concentrating on Salesforce Lightning Scheduler setting. So from the uh, setup uh, under the home tab you have this quick find search look out for the lightning. Here under you can see that under the feature settings you have a lightning scheduler. Click on lightning scheduler settings. Here you can see that there are a couple of things which are available. One is event management and based upon your business requirement you can either go ahead and enable uh, these uh, settings or you can disable it. It is based upon your business requirement and use cases. So let's um, understand what each terminology is um, talks about. But may, we will mainly concentrate, concentrate on the concurrent scheduling. But we will understand this in very brief. What is an event management? If you want to, if you enable this event management, we can allow the users to add the lightning scheduler service appointments to their Salesforce calendar. So if you disable it, then obviously they will not be able to add these scheduler appointments to their calendars. And that is the advantage of enablement or if you want to disable, you can disable it. Publish appointments as platform events. Um, this is something related to some platform events, high volume platform events when user create, update or delete the service appointment. Um, I have not enabled it at this moment. We don't need all of this. Block resource availability. I have just enabled it uh, as the term says. You can go ahead and block the resource availability that is, uh, you know, uh, it let users block time before and after the lightning scheduler appointment by creating a service appointment and events to block time before and after the app appointment. So basically you're blocking the resource for the appointment. That is what we will be, we are doing using this block resource availability. Multi-resource scheduling, you can let uh, users add multiple service resources to a service appointment. And our main topic today is related to the concurrent uh, scheduling. So what is this concurrent scheduling? Concurrent scheduling, it allows users to add multiple service appointments to a single time slot for a service resource. An event is created for each service appointment. Concurrent time slots are visible but can't be modified if the org preference is disabled. So if you really want this concurrent scheduling, then you can go ahead and enable it. Otherwise, you can go ahead and disable it. Concurrent scheduling are available only to the service territory member. You have to remember this concurrent scheduling is only available to the service territory member. These concurrent scheduling are not applicable to the service territory or work types. So, um, uh, so it is like when we go ahead and see a service territory or a work type record, we will not see the concurrent time slots in their operating hours because that is not applicable. It is only applicable to the service territory member. And using this concurrent scheduling, as I said, we can easily go ahead and schedule multiple customer appointments in the same slot. And um, there are certain limitations that is minimum concurrent appointments is 2 and maximum concurrent appointment is uh, 100. Now let us take an example or a use case, you know, any example in what scenario we might need this concurrent scheduling. Consider you have a training session which is scheduled at from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. They could be instant, they, I mean, when a training session is scheduled, there are multiple students who can go ahead and 
set up a or book an appointment for that specific time slot so this is a very apt example where we can go ahead and use a concurrent or scheduling another example is you have a doctor office and we in you in that doctor office during a specific time time that is 10 am to 11 am you can allow multiple patients to block the appointment uh, calendar so that is the purpose of using the concurrent uh, scheduling i hope you understood the meaning and um, wh what is the uh, what is the definition of a concurrent scheduling now what we will do is we will go into our configuration part and look out how can we go ahead and create a concurrent uh, scheduling time slots and how this concurrent scheduling operating hours it's all related to the different uh, objects uh, standard objects that we have let us go to the lightning scheduler here first at the step one let us go to the operating hours and click on new so when you click on new you give the name here you see any descriptions it is always good to provide a description because if not you if somebody else tries to open this particular uh, point uh, operating hours they will clearly have an idea about what are you uh, what is the specific operating hours talks about then you define the time zone whether it is specific time zone or eastern time zone if you recall in our session 2 demo related to the salesforce lightning scheduler we have used set service appointment windows However, in today's video session, we will be using set concurrent service appointment window. So this is where you go ahead and configure the concurrent scheduling appointment windows. How can you do that? You have to click on add rows and it's saying like, you know, Monday, what is the start time? What is the end time? And what is the maximum appointments you would want in that specific time slot that is timestamp. So as I said, Minimum is 2, maximum is 1000. According to that, based upon your requirement, you can go ahead and update the maximum appointments. Now, let us open the already created operating hours. So, this is the operating hours which I have created. I have given it as same in the same, um, uh, you know, the uh, naming conventions I have given WA HQ concurrent operating hours, then specific time zone I have given Monday to Friday. I have chosen 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Then the maximum appointments in that specific um, time zone, I have given it as 20. In this specific, only 20 uh, appointments can be scheduled. And I have chosen a separate concurrent work type group. So I will walk you through what and all are the different um, uh, other uh, uh, configurations I have done. So for now, just keep, keep a note that I have used the WAHQ concurrent work type group here. Now let us go back to the service territory. So I have created a separate service territory. This is what is the territory I have uh, chosen. HQ concurrent uh, service territory. Here you see you have to keep in mind that when as I was mentioning right concurrent time slots are only applicable to the service territory members. They are not applicable to the service uh, territories or the work times here you just choose the normal operating hours give all of these are the, as the uh, same and here you see the service territory member so in the service territory member if you open the service territory member you will see that i have chosen the service resource yeah i have chosen the service resource which i have created i will walk you through then I've chosen the service territory, which is the one which I've created. All of this remains the same. Here, I am going ahead and giving the concurrent operating hours that I have chosen. If you see on the right hand side, you can see the concurrent operating hours, which we have created um, in operating hours tab. So those details will be shown up in the service territory member. However, when you open the service territory, those details, um, the normal operating hours details will be shown. However, the concurrent operating hours details will not be shown here. So in the same way, I've created a new service resource. So here, if you see HQ service concurrent service resource, I've created a new service resource. I have created a new user 
and have assigned the permission set which I have created in my uh, session one. That permission set is assigned to the specific user and then all of these details remains the same. In the related, I have given the service territory, same HQ concurrent service territory. All of these steps remains the same. So I'm just, I just wanted to point out where exactly is the difference. The difference is in the service territory member. So if you can see the service territory member will have the concurrent uh, service, um, concurrent operating hours. Now let's go to work type group. So I'm going in sequence. I hope you are able to follow me. First um, service territory, service resources, then I'm going to the work type groups. So when you create uh, the operating hours using the concurrent, you can give any of the existing work type group because we might not have created the work types at the, st at the first place, right? So you can use um, the already existing work time groups um, in the operating hours. Later on, you can go ahead and modify the operating hours. If you might be wondering, I really don't know what, me, what is my work time group and other stuff uh, for the concurrent, then you can use the already existing non-concurrent work time groups. So work time group here. So for this one also, I have created a new work type group, which is WA HQ concurrent work type group. Here, if you can see, everything remains the same. Let us go to the related. Here, there is nothing much which we can assign. So here, the work time group member. I have given the work type group and the work type. So let's go to the work type. This is the work type I have created. W Washington HQ concurrent work type. I have given the same, uh, all of these details remains the same. Yeah, uh, take a look into that. Let's um, click on edit. So even you see here, I've not chosen any of the work type uh, operating hours. I've chosen the estimated duration as 30. Duration time uh, type is minutes. All of these minutes and rest all remains the same. Now let's go to the related and see how we can go ahead and relate all of this. So I've given the skills. If you recall, I've created a skills called HQ skills. So I've chosen that specific skill. I've chosen the service territory work time and I've also chosen the work type group member. So here we are connecting all of the um, uh, resources that we have created, all of the uh, objects that we have created, records that we have created. Sorry, let me take my words back. All of the records that we have created, we are going in and relating all of those service territory, service resource, work type groups, work type and the operating hours together. And then finally, you can come back to the HQ operating hours. You can click on edit. And then since you, re you have created a new work type group, in the work type group, you can go ahead and update uh, the correct work type group that you want to use it for your uh, uh, appointment uh, scheduling. Now that we have configured the end-to-end -end, uh, concurrent uh, scheduling, let us see how we can go ahead and uh, see how this concurrent scheduling works um, on an account. So if you recall, we are using an account. On the account, you have a button called a schedule appointment. So let us choose this account. We have the schedule appointment button. So I'm clicking the schedule appointment button. And then here I'm trying to select the service uh, resource. So if you recall, we already have the service resource, WA HQ concurrent service resource. In my earlier demo, we used this one. However, my use case is different now. I wanted to use make use of the concurrent service. So I'm choosing this service resource and clicking on next. Here I'm choosing HQ concurrent work type group. Then this is not needed. Then here I'm choosing my So here you see the details are being shown up because it is the non-concurrent uh, service, uh, non-concurrent operating hours. However, this will get diff, uh, changed. Click on next. And here you see the service resource is assigned. And if you want to go ahead and add or manage or anything, you can go ahead and do that. You can add the service resources. Let's click on cancel and here 
you see from monday 9 am if you recall i have given i have chosen the concurrent uh, scheduling uh, operating hours from 9 to 5 only those are being visible over here 8 to 5 8 a.m. to 5 uh, p.m. time slots are not shown up in this schedule appointment uh, time slot uh, window. So based upon the user requirement, you can uh, go ahead and uh, choose um, uh, the time slot. I mean, the, sorry, the, the user can go ahead and choose the time slot. And uh, whatever you have defined according to that, if you have given for this specific time slot only three are available, then only three time slots will be booked. Yes, I've chosen that and click on next. So this is how you can go ahead and uh, configure your concurrent uh, scheduling and uh, use this concurrent scheduling according to your business requirement. I hope you got some um, information about how can we go ahead and use the concurrent scheduling uh, in our lightning scheduling uh, for this schedule appointment um, yeah, until we hear back uh, until we come back with the next session take care uh, stay safe goodbye